All right, hi everyone. Thank you for the invite to come and speak today. So Bob and I will introduce ourselves. We come from a very different perspective. Uh, we actually work for a health system and oversee a venture accelerator. So we're gonna talk through the impetus of why health systems are now getting involved in venture acceleration, what it means, what it looks like. Um, but with that, I will let Bob introduce himself first. Sure, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, my name is Bob Largy, and I work with Jonathan at, at uh, White Plains Hospital in our innovation accelerator. It's been a very exciting time for us, very exciting time for the hospital, uh, and for, as you can imagine, the whole healthcare industry itself. And uh, I would just kick off with a uh, question toward Jonathan, because we talk about this a lot, and it's basically in terms of establishing this, what type of uh, hospitals really want to get involved in this space when they start developing innovation in accelerators? Before I answer that, I'll introduce myself. I'm Jonathan Bandel, the Assistant Vice President of Strategic Service Lines at White Plains Hospital. Prior to being at White Plains, I worked at the Hospital for Special Surgery as the direct, Senior Director of Strategic Ventures, where I actually raised a venture fund in addition to working with startups. So to answer Bob's question, and I have my cheat sheet here as well, we've scripted this. And the intent is to make this less formal and make it interactive, so we'll take audience questions as well, even though I know we have 10 minutes, so I'm going to speak quickly. Um, oversimplification, hospitals around the country are facing declining margins, revenues going down while expenses are growing, and so we're looking at ways to diversify income sources. Uh, in addition to those pressures, we're also facing non-traditional healthcare providers coming into the provider space like Amazon, JP Morgan, CVS, that are all starting to create their own provider networks, essentially competing with us. Um, so, as I mentioned, hospitals look at a variety of ways to diversify income, one being increased push towards philanthropy, another being some health systems are creating their own insurance products, like Northwell had Care Connect, which didn't work and they divested it, um, and the other avenue is venture acceleration and venture investment. Um, it used to be in the purview of academic medical centers limited to the Cleveland clinics, Mayo clinics, the HSSs of the world, but more and more community hospitals are getting involved. And Becker's Hospital Review found that between 2015 and 2017, there was, I don't want to misquote it, 92% increase in the number of hospitals and innovation centers. And the American Hospital Association, in collaboration with Avia, did a survey that found of the hospitals that didn't have an innovation center, whatever that means, and we'll talk about that in a second, 30% uh, said they had planned to build an innovation center within an 18 month period. So what does it mean? What does an innovation center look like? There is no standard definition. Uh, they all have some pieces that are similar, but all operate very differently. So they typically have one component of venture acceleration, working with startups in whatever space or technology you might be interested in, however it uh, ties into the investment criteria and thesis, uh, to really do proof of concept and scale. So a company needs data points, they have a great idea, they have a prototype, they have a product, we bring it into our health system, we evaluate it, we test it, and then we try to essentially provide testimonial that it works and in some cases study the impact so we can validate that it actually did what it says it's gonna do so they can bring it to market and scale. Two, uh, hospitals have large medical staffs, and this is where the academic medical centers differentiate slightly. Uh, our physicians are a great source of ideas and knowledge, and in some cases are academic. So most hospitals have some tech transfer, commercialization of IP policy and process where you work with the medical staff to help commercialize their ideas, bring them to market. Three, venture funding, and this is the area that I think I'm most interested in and we do work closely in. Um, every hospital that says they do venture funding does it differently. The majority, believe it or not, f fund any venture investment off of the balance sheet. Very few have raised external funds, but, but there are the ones that have gone external. Ascension's the best example of that. They've raised $800 million in four funds and they function truly as a venture capital firm. Um, that's sort of the overview. Like I said, there is nuance and difference to every innovation center. Um, anything yeah, the only other thing that? I would add to that, it's been fascinating for us having worked in two different organizations as you go throughout healthcare. There's one unifying thing that uh, continues to uh, drive the acceleration of, of all the innovation that's happening, and that's data. And the data that we find at, at a community hospital like White Plains is just as valid as what we had in the academic centers that we're out at uh, HSS. Uh, many of you have probably heard the saying, data is the new oil, and it's, it's got value, it's got, uh, it's got brand value in terms of how you can charge for it. So it's been interesting for us as we go through and make uh, cultural changes to the organizations that we go in there to let them feel that, it, you know, the days of free pilots and free use of resources and things of that nature uh, are, are not in this, in this model anymore. 
So. Yeah, and I, I think the community hospital piece is important as well. Like I said, initially it was limited to the academic medical centers, and we've seen a shift into the community hospital. And UNC Healthcare down in North Carolina is a great example of that. They actually run their venture accelerator and fund out of a community hospital in their system, not the academic medical center. And if you talk to them, the reason they do that, it's really twofold. One, uh, they didn't want to get bogged down in the bureaucracy of the academic medical center, so they're doing it through a leaner organization that can really push pilots and technologies through. And second, um, there's a great quote by the woman who runs their innovation entity that says essentially, and I'm paraphrasing, the majority of healthcare continues to be delivered in community hospitals, which is why they decided to put it in a community hospital. Just because something works at the Mayo Clinic doesn't mean it's going to work at White Plains Hospital. Um, and that's one of the advantages. The second thing, an observation that I've made, um, it's interesting to see where you have traditional competitors within the provider space that now collaborate in the innovation space. So a good example, and probably the best example, is this company, Avizia, that was acquired by American Well recently. And both Mount Sinai, Northwell, and uh, New York Presbyterian all were investors in the company and helped refine the technology and scale it. And ultimately, everyone benefited as a result of it. Um, that's really all we had to say. And I wanted to open it up to the audience to answer questions more than anything. And I like how everyone sat all the way back, too, which is interesting. Hi, my name is Kevin Fryer, and I spoke earlier. Um, in the patient world that I deal with, patient advocates, people who are involved, there's a big movement toward the 31st right, which is the right to own their own data. So what is your viewpoint on that as data is the new oil? Who owns the data? How are you giving it back to them so that they can actually benefit as actually, well? Let, let's do a two-part answer on that. Uh, we wrestle with that question every time a contract comes before us. So it's, it's, it's basically uh, something that needs to be resolved on a case-by-case -case basis in the situations that we're dealing with. Yeah, uh, I'll second that. I mean, it's sort of a, a hedge where it, data ownership, it, it's a difficult issue. I mean, particularly in light of what happened at Memorial Sloan Kettering recently where they had a conflict of interest in one of their departments. It's tough. Uh, any time we work with a startup, we ensure that we own our data that's coming out of our system. But to your point about the patients, the consenting process is extremely important. So they understand what their data is going to be used for. Nothing should be a surprise. It's also all anonymous. We obviously take off any patient identifier before we do anything with any information and aggregate it to try to prevent any issue of personal information and personal health identification and information leaking out. Um, but it's something that we all struggle with in this space, certainly. Canada, it's, it's, a, it's a mess. The, uh, the, governments have, governments, the governments have gotten involved in deciding uh, what data belongs to the patient and what belong, can be sold. And it's, uh, they're still trying to work it out. I think it's been like two, two decades or something. There's still working. But, but to get back to my original question, just to make sure I heard you correctly, because this is blowing my mind, the hospitals are running VC, VCs out of the hospitals? Yes. It can take various different forms. Off the balance sheet is one way to do it. Also, raising our own fund is one way to do it. There's various ways that uh, we have at our disposal to be able to structure it. I see, and and the the fund would obviously cater to the strengths of your medical staff, like if the hospital's expert in cardiology, you would fund companies that are developing cardiology-based technologies over. Yeah, so typically every hospital health system will have a different investment thesis that, of areas that they're interested in. So for example, our areas of interest tend to be more digital health and um, medical device, uh, mostly because the payback period tends to be a little bit shorter than life science and therapeutics. Um, but yes, essentially, you, we're, you're not going to stray beyond your core mission. The reason we exist is to support our core mission, which is patient care delivery. And so our focus tends to be on ways to enhance the experience or quality or operational efficiency. But yeah, we tend to not do it at the service level. So it's not like only cardiology. We try to find products that we can use cross-sectionally across service lines that may have a similar impact. Yeah, so you, but you don't call yourselves uh, 
VCs, though, you call yourselves medtech accelerators? Every place calls it something different. Oh, I yeah, see. And, and every place so I phone is innovation switchboard. different. And, yep. That's what I'm trying to get at. Mm -hmm. So if I phone the switchboard and I ask them to put me through to whoever's handling funds for investment, they would they know what department to... <laughs> Dep depends who's answering the switchboard. So in our organization, we're, we're called the Venture Accelerator. At HSS, where we came from, it was the Global Innovation Institute. Uh, NYP is NYP Ventures. Sinai, Sinai Ventures. Northwell's Northwell Ventures. Every place does it. Cleveland Clinic is Cleveland Clinic Ventures. Every place has a different name for it. All right. Thank you. You also mentioned, though, about the specialty, specialty areas, cardiology and the like. What's been fascinating for us are those areas not considered uh, innovation hotbeds that suddenly when you start applying artificial intelligence and, and the wherewithal that that brings, there's different fascinating places that come out of the hospital that start innovating, as an example, in our emergency unit when it comes to triage and things of that nature. Uh, I'm curious what the hospital's view is on encouraging internal research and development in med tech and digital health. Are you, do you guys have a program in place to encourage your doctors to develop that stuff, or do you want them on the patients and you're much more interested in looking outside the hospital? So we are interested in working with our medical staff on commercialization of their ideas. Historically, they've worked with industry, and now it's about how do we incentivize them to want to work with us instead.